During the 2002 Super Bowl, football fans were rooting for touchdowns in the end zone while Pizza Hut was getting TV audiences into the P-Zone. Today, Trevor and I will attempt to recreate the legendary Pizza Hut Pizzone, a toasted Parmesan pizza crust filled with pizza toppings and melted cheese, baked calzone style, and served with marinara dipping sauce. Back in the day, they served up pepperoni, classic, and meaty versions, but despite the Pizzone being a beloved item, it's been on and off the menu ever since, making its final ill-fated appearance during March Madness 2019. Unfortunately, the Pizzone was tragically phased out again, so we're here to bring it back. It's time for... Pass! My knees hurt too bad to turn. Pass! 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 Food! There it is, okay, all right. Um. <laughs> Wait, that what wasn't the take? Pass! Turn. Yes. Yes. Food! I said turn, I'm not Hit supposed to say hands. turn. Hit the jazz hands. I said turn, I feel bad about that. Now Trevor, the pizza. Hey, that's what I call my bathtub. The you pee, the pee zone. You pee in your bath while you're taking a bath, or you just use it as an alternate toilet. You don't need to know my life. Okay. <laughs> Listen, if Bear Grylls can drink his pee and become a millionaire on the Discovery Channel, Trevor can soak in his own pee in the privacy of his own home. Uh, <laughs> Trevor, the Pizzone. Yes. It's a story of hope turned to desperation. 2002, right? You know, you got Gen the Gen Xers. You were almost born then. The Gen Xers, they're starting to have kids. You know, America's transitioning a little bit away from, you know, nuclear family to a more individualistic society. And we go, hey, we can't be affording to like have all these big pizzas. We need to give people the freedom to express themselves individually. A lot of the marketing campaigns, right? One was featuring Tommy Davidson. Great in the movie Joanna Man. Don't think that movie holds up. Don't think that movie holds up through a lens of today. But back then, I'm telling you, Joanna Man was funny. I just make your own judgments about that movie. Back then, Pizza Hut was dominating the fast food pizza world. Yeah. Then fast forward, Trevor, 2008 financial crash. Okay. Yeah. Pizza Hut gets hit harder than any fast food restaurant in America. Places that serve individual meals for cheap, Taco Bell, Subway, they start exploding. Pizza Hut realizes these handhelds, mm -hmm. right, those are the future of our company. Meanwhile, Domino's, Domino's 2010, right, in the wake, people losing their houses, they launch their $5.99 value menu. They're selling sandwiches, they're selling pasta bowls, they're selling weird chicken with yeah. jalapenos and cheese and sauce baked on top. Yeah. Suddenly, Pizza Hut, they decide the Pizzone's not enough. Well, because th those big red Pizza Hut hats on top of the building gotta yeah. be expensive. Those are very, no, actually Pizza Hut was one of the most expensive fast food franchises to run. Uh, around that time, the biggest like Pizza Hut franchise collective filed for bankruptcy. They had a billion dollars in debt because Pizza Hut's whole thing was like, people are gonna come in and eat inside of a fast food restaurant. We're gonna have buffets, we're gonna have the red cups, all that, and Domino's was like, we're just an eight foot by eight foot square box on any major street and we're gonna deliver pizza to you in 30 minutes with a touch of a button. Yeah. And so Domino's really started overtaking Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut panics, they go, Pizzone's not good enough. We gotta come out with the Pizzolo. <laughs> the Pizzolo, Trevor, it is a Pizzone yeah. that they sort of like nip and tuck and then made it into the shape of a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's genius. It's genius, <laughs> absolutely genius. But nobody thought that and nobody bought the Pizzolo and people kept buying $5 foot longs from Subway even though they, had their own PR disaster around that time. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, fast forward, 2019, they bring the Pizzone back, it's yet another failure, and that gets replaced by the Pizza Hut melts. Pizza Hut, for 20 years, has been trying to figure out how to sell a small, folded, proto-pizza-like product, and today, Trevor, we're not just gonna make the Pizzone, we're gonna make the Pizzolo. What's the Pizzolo? The Pizzolo, that's my other bathtub. <laughs> that you also pee in. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't use the shower in Trevor's apartment. <laughs> Trevor, we're gonna try and get deep into this, figure out the psychology behind Pizza Hut, and we're gonna figure out how they can overtake Domino's to be kings of the fast food pizza world once again. Stop fingering them. What are you, you doing? You said we're getting deep. Oh, I'm I guess deep we're in. doing it. Let's get cooking. Hey Trevor, what are you doing there? I'm looking at what pizza I am. Based on my zodiac sign on spork.com, do you want to know what it is? Yeah, what well, you're a Cancer, Leo, you're a Leo sun, blue eyes, white dragon. Exactly, sizing? exactly. And I'm a signature slick spicy Italian sausage pizza. Do you feel that's accurate with what your personality gives off? I do, I love a spicy Italian sausage What am pizza. I, I'm a Taurus. You're, Josh, you are where the Taurus is, uh, Stouffer's extra cheese French bread pizza. 
French bread pizza is not pizza. <laughs> I'm starting to think that maybe astrology is not rooted in hard science. If you want to know what frozen pizza you are based on your zodiac sign, go check out spork.com. And they also have a bunch of other stuff there. So check it out. I'm Jewish. We don't do that. Um, all right. So, I mean, check out Spork. Spork does great work. Uh, right now, we got a giant hunk of beef. You might be asking. I thought you was making a pizzone. Why do you have a giant hunk of beef there? Well, the pizzolo. Yeah. Right, so like I said, the Pozzolo was a direct response to Domino's oven-baked sandwiches. Domino's had a Philly cheesesteak oven-baked sandwich. Mm -hmm. Pizza Hut's response was to come out with the Italian beef Pozzolo, which is basically a stromboli, uh, but they had a fantastic shaved processed beef with peppers and onions and cheese in there, and it tasted really good. You dip that in some marinara, it's like a fancy Hot Pocket. So we're gonna try and make this beef taste as processed and tender as possible. Can I start by doing something? Yeah, I brought this from my home from my pea zone, <laughs> am I right? Don't put that in your pea zone. <laughs> We're dumping a bunch of baking soda on. It's a process called velveting, where you use sodium bicarbonate to artificially tenderize the meat. Uh, if you ever go get like beef and broccoli from a Chinese restaurant, the reason the beef is so tender is from baking soda. It's really delicious, and it's gonna make this taste processed. And the next step, Trevor, Soak in a bunch of salt. And I'm, well, I gotta inject it too, dude. We, we're gonna soak in salt, we're gonna inject it in salt, we're gonna throw a bunch of garlic in there. Yeah. We're just gonna see what happens, we're I'm vibing. Gonna get, I'm gonna take some of this water, I know this is, this is your water. You, what are you doing, Josh? We're making the marinara dipping sauce. Marinara comes from the Italian of a relating to the sea or relating to fishermen. Um, and so that is where we get marinara sauce from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes 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 no sense whatsoever. You might be looking at this bowl and going, wow, Josh, that's the crappiest, that's not a marinade, that's not the crappiest marinara. Yeah, marinade is supposed to have like squid and octopus <laughs> and mussels in it, because it literally means of fishermen. Josh literally did this one time though, like just for funsies, he was like, yeah. mm, I want I want a marinara to dip in and we didn't have anything. And he took tomato paste and water mm -hmm. and he just put it in like a cup. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of swirled it around and shook it and put a bunch of spices in it. And it was like a really good marinara. Right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So we're just gonna literally thin that out with water. And this is gonna be the base for our pizzone in there. Yeah, I'm poking holes in this beef. I'm really gonna get in there yeah. and inject it. So we're <laughs> adding some various herbs to this. We need green specks in it. Cause you look at a pizza. Oh God. Oh, we're just injecting straight <laughs> jarlic water in there. This literally looks like hit the water up, from up. my pea zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, I thought it was uh, uh, This is garlic and salt water. I don't feel good. I've never felt that sensation before. Do you want to do it? Do you want to try it? It'll yeah, make, it make so you feel sorry. alive. I'm so sorry. It'll make you feel alive, dude. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, Papa John's, 1984, Papa John Schnatter. He had his own PR disaster, it was bad, but then Shaq, they took <laughs> Shaq replaced Papa John Schnatter for Papa John's, oh and now they're good. So, um, anyways, Papa John Schnatter, first person to ever serve a garlic buttery dipping sauce, 1984, the inception of Papa John's changed, I got garlic <laughs> juice on my leg now. Um, <laughs> that's gonna be yeah, awesome. Anyways. <laughs> Do uh, you want to taste it? Yeah, man. I don't even think I stirred it. Just give me some right now. <laughs> yeah, this is where we're at now. Yeah, I'll make it extra sloppy for you. Yeah. That's great, right? Yeah, it's so sugary. It's so awesome. It's oh my so God. Sugary. It tastes like a smoothie. That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to let that marinate for a while, and then we're just going to like throw it in an oven to cook until it's done. I'm feeling good about this. This is a great start. Oh God. So if you probably <laughs> got the Diet Coke. Here's the thing. The jar of water in the back of the throat, that was pretty uh, incapacitatory. We don't feel very good. No. We figured Diet Coke's nice. It's got nutrients in it, it's got acid, it's got a little bit of sodium. Watch that, it's making us both feel worse. <laughs> it's kind of foaming with the jar. Yeah. That's here, that's staying. Cause we got a job to do. I I'm gonna prep the vegetables for the pizzolo. Yeah. Now normally we would try and get the toppings directly from Pizza Hut, but this time we went to Pizza Hut and they said, well, these toppings are raw, we cannot just give these to you on account of they may be contaminated, they need to be cooked for food safety reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, to which I say, government overreach is at an all time <laughs> high. Just let me grab a handful of red onions from your little pizza buffet and be on my way. And so I'm climbing over the counter, right? Somebody pulls out their phone, they yell world star. You know, I don't know what's going on. But <clears throat> the point is I gotta cut my own red onions like a freaking peasant right now. Uh, I'm making the dough. We got a classic past food dough going here. <laughs> uh, so we got what we got here is yeast, and we got flour. 
Um, and then we have milk powder because real milk is so dang expensive. Yeah, it's heavy. It's heavy. You know, it's heavy. It's why you take the water out of it. Yeah, you take the water out of it. You just add it to water later. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got dough conditioner, which again, I still don't understand. And this is like, you know, I'm yeah, like- Yeah, it's got your riboflavins. <laughs> it's got your other stuff in it. Dough conditioner is, anytime you've tried to make bread at home, no, no, no. You know the people that go to Europe and they're like, Everything hurts my stomach in America, but I go to Europe and I eat bread and I'm fine. And then you taste bread in Europe and you're like, that yeah, tastes like bread. Then you come to America, you just slice a Wonder Bread and you're like, this is a cake that stays yeah. fresh mm -hmm. for months on end. This is a modern miracle of science. And it's awesome. It's dough conditioner. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's also actually a thing that makes Vietnamese baguettes a lot lighter and crispier than a French baguette making uh, bun mi sandwiches. Mm. You know, different from, from a jambon burr, so to speak. So, dough yeah. conditioners are really delightful. I don't know if it's good for you, bad for you. Uh, it's not my place to say. Yeah, um, but all I know is it makes pizza, it's pizza weirdly soft. Yeah. In a way that most pizzas aren't. So, that's what's going to the dough. I'm going to chop some onion. Yeah, I'm going to grab, I'm sorry. Nice uh, I'm fair. sorry, I forgot the salt, everyone. Hey, uh, here's the thing about me is that, you know, I'm imperfect. Yeah. I'm flawed, and I mess up sometimes. Yeah. Um, but honestly, it's very rarely, and it actually doesn't really happen. I'm kind of perfect, so. Well, I don't know, I don't know. I think leaning into that is kind of what makes our, our cooking show unique, right? Like, you get a lot of other chefs who are like, we only use natural ingredients, and we're trying, and we're kind of the opposite. We're like, no, we are, we have a whole, I want to show them the chemical drawer. I don't think the camera can reach here. We just have a whole drawer filled with chemicals, right? We, we got, I mean, yeah. we got, you know, just a big old thing of cream of tartar, a bit, well, no, malic acid in there. We got more chemicals down. We just have a, check this out. Do you know what calcium chloride is? I don't. We're like a team of dumb scientists <laughs> with a bunch of dangerous chemicals just sitting in here. Um, and I think that's fun. Sodium citrate, we got the god chemical. This makes nacho cheese taste like nacho cheese. Yeah. And so that's Dude. what we're doing. Check. Buttermilk check, powder. Check this out. <laughs> Enzorbit. <laughs> hey, I love that movie. What is Enz? <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> Not of it. That's a great movie. <laughs> I'm gonna get this nice and thin. That's perfect. How you doing with that dough? Oh, it's awesome. That's great. There, there's great. weird bubbles in there. I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, well, no, the bubbles are what makes it nice, light, and airy. Yeah, dude. You know? <laughs> Trevor, you're the expert. You got a degree in this, man. <laughs> I might have put a little pranky prank on you. What's the pranky prank? I don't know. I'd put Diet Coke in the dough. <laughs> God damn it. I just figured, you it know, might there's as well. But listen, there's probably caramel coloring in there to help browning. I don't know why I did that. I'm just like, I think I'm going through a rebellious phase. Um, this is the I, problem with hiring young people. You know, <laughs> is they haven't gone through their rebellious phase yet. Yeah. And then the end, suddenly it's Diet Coke and you know. Trevor, you will learn once you hit like 27, that conformity is actually the way to go. You'll see people like buying houses and starting families and you're like, oh God, maybe that stuff is more important than all the quote unquote beliefs I used to have. Um, I found dusty Legos. Oh God. I'm gonna make a Lego penis. Well, I got some nice, look at my nice little vegetable Julienne's, man, it's pretty good. Yep, that's a, that is what a penis looks like. Welcome back to our cooking show. We have our beautiful <laughs> Juliana vegetables. We're cooking our garlic injected steak. We're trying to wash the garlic out of our own throats with Diet Coke. Yep. The Diet Coke has somehow <laughs> ended up in the dough and we're gonna let this knead for about five minutes. Then we're gonna roll it out and start stuffing our pizzolos and our pizzones. Woo, up top. <laughs> uh. Uh, we got one Pozzolo Italian beef, one Pozzone meaty. It's 2011. This is for a divorced mom who can't afford a large pizza anymore because her house got foreclosed on. She lost all her money in the Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. Pozzone, Pozzolo, and Ponzi, the three P's. <laughs> all right. All right, let's do it, Trevor. Come on, we got an order up. I'm okay. gonna take this beef and I'm gonna try and slice it as thin as possible. Dude, that beef looks awesome. You wanna try it? Yeah, kind of. I'm gonna hack I it up. I don't know. Uh, this looks dense and congealed. I know it's a rush order. I don't care anymore, KG. I'm sorry. We're gonna get fired. I've been dipping my raw hands into those. That tastes like something you eat at a Pizza Hut. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm gonna continue to slice this razor thin. They ain't doing this in the Pizza Hut. I am making the P zone, the cow zone, which uh, I believe uh, is just the the 12 inch pizza that is folded over in itself. So I'm going for a little foot, yeah, basically foot long here. We got all, the, all of our ingredients for the Italian beef pizzolo. I'm stoked on this, man. I think it's gonna be good. The pizzolo, you take the 12 inch pizza, you fold it in half, that becomes a pizzone. But then you do the old drag queen tuck and you take that edge and the skirt and you fold it right under. And then that becomes a pizzolo. Also, you cut little holes in it to let it breathe. 
Yeah. And that's it. But it was, I mean, very Stromboli-esque, mm -hmm. you know? I was looking there at the, the picture of the P-Zone and like, there's no discernible like seam on it. You get like, a it's normal in a factory, zone. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, it's like a big, you know, half moon hot pocket. No, it's like a slight scalloped edge on it, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's not like you go you go to a mom and pop and get a calzone, that's real different. Yeah. It's like a good thickness. I'm gonna trim it to be a little bit shorter because they were about like eight inches long. Okay. Just trim up Do you know what dough. eight inches looks like? I sure don't. No, not even close, man, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, nice little smattering of our ultra processed beef. Do you think they're doing this at the Pizza Hut? Yeah, of course. A little ruler mark here. I gotta, I, this is a big moment for me. The, I mean, Pizza Hut dough, it's literally rolled out via, it's just a giant machine that goes like, bleh, and like slaps the tumbler down on the dough and presses it. Yeah, yeah, no, but like, you know, I've overcome a lot of baking challenges in my life, and this might be the biggest one I've faced yet. Um, listen, I'm gonna put some garlic butter inside of it. Do, do I know if this is true to what they were doing? at the pizza, no, but hey, listen, I'm, I get to eat this Italian pizzolo. It's gone, lost to the sands of time. This is beef topping. Um, <laughs> unclear what that really means. No, I, I have a theory about beef topping. So any fast food beef, it's, it's most likely going to be a sausage. There's gonna be spices and water, and it's gonna be an emulsification. Mm -hmm. um, they had pork sausage. I think the beef topping was literally just for like non-pork eaters. A lot of Muslims, a lot of Jews out there. Yeah. Don't eat pork. Um, okay. But they didn't want to call it sausage because then it still seems like it'd be pork. And the only thing they could decide was like, well, let's just call it beef topping. Beef topping. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then we got this is we got beef topping and mild Italian and regular. It's like yeah. mild sausage and Italian sausage. Yeah, so, yeah, that's great. Yeah, they're they're using multiple types of sausage right, here. So we're tucking everything in. Dude, I love ham cubes so flipping much. You love ham cubes? Dude, no, going to you the love Sizzler a ham when I was a kid. Oh yeah, I love ham cubes too, you're right. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That looks pretty good, man. Yeah, you think so? You think it's filled enough? That is filled, I will tell you what, about 120% more than the Pizzone would have been. Yeah, but it's so puffy. I think we do it though, I think we run I could take. I could take some off. I think you should take some off. I'm very okay. proud of my Pozzolo here. Yeah, you did great. I'm sorry, I suck. No, no, you gotta, you gotta put yourself in a Pizza Hut scarcity mindset. Yeah, you know? I was gonna do that, but then like I was getting so happy. You no, know? don't be happy. You're at Pizza Hut. Okay. Nobody's happy to be at Pizza Hut. You've, you've dom Domino surpassed Pizza Hut officially in global revenue in 2017. You know what I mean? But the seeds were already sown before that. So right now you're losing to Domino's. Papa John's is on the rise until you know the thing happened with Papa John's. Uh, Little Caesars. You know, PR stories are getting out about how the founder of Little Caesars paid for Rosa Parks' rent mm -hmm. for her entire life. That's a real fun story. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're on the rise. They're getting wins. Pizza Hut, no, no wins. No wins, just Pizzones. My working theory is that, hold on. Do we have something wet? That seems like a trap. Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna try and get wet because there's flour on the bottom of this. But what I'm thinking here, man, what I'm thinking here is I fold underneath, right? Oh, interesting. Because you can't have a seam, so I'm thinking I fold underneath. Can I eat the salad here? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm going underneath here, okay? This is insane. Again, this is one of the biggest baking challenges that I've ever had to overcome. Some said it was impossible. Nobody believed in Trevor. What? <laughs> no, nobody? <laughs> All right. Operation uh, Dumbo Drop. One, two, go. Oh God, where are you going? No, no, flip it, flip it diagonal, 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 diagonal. diagonal. Okay, okay, and then we re, and then we reset. Then we go, now we gotta redo all the work. Okay, yeah, no, now it's, it's fine, the cause they look like little buttholes. Annalise just said, get this quick. Yeah, get this and quick. So we're doing get it very quick. quickly. Hold on, we'll just pretend, they don't need to see this. We'll yeah, just, just pretend. We'll just pretend it. Okay. Wow, wow, let's get this baking. Faster, faster, baking. Faster, faster. 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 Wowie zowie! <laughs> you wanna know something funny? Our oven still says preheat. These have been in there for 80 minutes and it still says preheat. Yeah, listen, hey, you think all the ovens at all those Pizza Hut franchises that went bankrupt are working all the time? No, <laughs> no. Um, now, okay, so we got the lovely Parmesan crust. This is looking great. I wish I would've put more Parmesan on mine, but nobody's perfect and some people are bad. Yeah. Vegan. This is just brushing that crispy cheese Dude, it's with so wet. I believe margarine, was margarine invented by one of the chefs slash scientists in Napoleon's court for the Napoleonic Wars? Can somebody Google that? I feel like it was. Napoleonic Wars invented a lot of like a, a, a cannery sort of a technology, and I think margarine was part of that. Who cares? Margarine, they figured out <laughs> how to turn plants into butter. This is a modern marvel of science. We've <laughs> eschewed so much science in the name of purity, and I'm, I'm sick of it. Uh, here we have it. 
God, that's wet with margarine. Dude, it looks so um, good. We got our Italian beef pizzolo, and we got our meaty P-Zone. P-Zone. We're meaty in the P-Zone right now. No, we're not talking about Trevor's bathtub. But you know what we are talking about, Trevor? Is we're talking about cutting, cutting to the, the packaging. packaging. Trevor, as they said every time you order this at Pizza Hut, unleash the P-Zone and P-Zolo. <laughs> Wowie, oh, wow. zowie. <laughs> Yowie, wowie, indeed. Trevor, you wanna cut that in half? Can we, can we share it? Yeah, we can share it. Cause this was meant for two harried parents to share while their children ate the pizza. Why this was an unfriendly item for children and more friendly for adults, I am unclear about. Do you want, which one do you Look want? Look at that cakey pizza. Yeah, hut. that's dough. awesome. That is the cakiest. That is uh, so cakey. Wow, that's all that dough conditioner in there. Yeah. I mean, just look at that. Look at that cross section. Look at the cheese in there, the ingredients. I love how the cheese on top is just a sheet. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, awesome. You peel it right off. You peel it right off, and then you've got wet garlic, <laughs> garlic margarine bed? underneath. Do you ever have a bed with like a heavy duvet? And like, Ooh, I don't want this heavy duvet on. You just peel it right off. <laughs> That's like beautiful, but I want it right on there. I'm gonna submerge it. Yeah, it's going in right this, in. And then I'm gonna slurp it out of the dough. For the first time in fast food history, we might have made something significantly worse than the original. <laughs> <laughs> that marinara is so sugary. I put a lot of sugar in the marinara. <laughs> which, hey, I don't regret. Hey, hey, hold on. It can be fixed, uh, though. We got a little red flake. Yeah, I'll get some green in there. <laughs> some green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> green. I'm gonna get some red. Mm. If it was better, it would have been around for a while. I want to try this Pizzolo, though. Because this is the yeah. evolution. This is the Pikachu and this is the Raichu. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that was really good, dude. Yes, man. But you don't really want to evolve Pikachu into Raichu. What you want to do is you want to get a light oh, orb and then you want to give that who to the Pikachu and then breed it because NSD. then the Pichu will um, learn Volt Tackle. Thank you. Did you just say breed it? Yeah. All right, cool. So yeah. we're going <laughs> to... Oh, it's so much better. Yeah, it's great. Hold on. <laughs> it's worse than a sandwich, though. You'd agree? Yeah. For the sandwich, you got bread that's already cooked. You get to slice it and then add as much of the filling as you want. But mm -hmm. this is sort of a weird predetermined squidge yeah. in there. And then you bake it, and then it just turns into whatever this is. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I'm pretty, I'm pretty disappointed okay, okay. in all this. I'm pretty <laughs> mad <laughs> no, 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 that no. I could have just been eating a Pizza Hut pizza. <laughs> check this out. Check this out. Okay, you take <laughs> the cheese crisps. Okay. And then you go in into the marinara. Okay, the sugary yeah, marinara, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. and then you hit the green. I'm here. Light of the green, I'm and then all red, and then you hit the red. Let me hit the green. Okay, but then this is the most important. Where's the ranch? This is the most important. This is the most important part. You got to get a big oh, swing of dice. Go. Ah. You're happy about that? Yeah. Trevor, <laughs> do you think that this should be brought back from the past? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Listen, I don't think the P-Zone or the P-Zolo should be brought back in the past. Mm -mm. But if you do, keep it to yourself. <laughs> you know? Just think the thought and don't let it go anywhere. That's what people used to do. Before they had access to Twitter and Instagram and all that. You just think thoughts all the time. Go post it um, on, a, on a message board in your village. Make some flyers, yeah. yeah. Put it up in the village in the town square. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for stopping by Mythical Kitchen. We'll be making more, <laughs> more of this crap. crap. Food. <laughs> <laughs> next time, uh, like, subscribe, click the bell or whatever. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. Right. I'm still gonna eat it though, I'll tell you what. The Spork team is tirelessly taste testing groceries every day so you can buy only the best. Find what you're looking for on spork.com.